Hey guys, welcome to another anatomy lesson on Jemima's YouTube channel. So in my last episode, I had showed you this model and I told you a lot of things are happening here, which I'm going to show you in my next video. So I brought this video to you to explain in details what's happening in this place. See you soon. Okay, welcome back so this is the model if you've not subscribed to this channel please hit the red subscribe button is here and also like this video already okay so let's get started this is this model and this is the left lobe of the liver and this is the right lobe of the liver i don't know how it's looking like in your screen this might not be the left or this might not be the right but this is the left how do you identify the left lobe is smaller than the right lobe and that's why the dome of the diaphragm is like that so the right lobe pushes that dome upwards and also has a contribution to the concavity of the lungs you get it you know the lungs should be upper here good so this is the left lobe right lobe this is the inferior vena cava this blue one you're seeing here is the inferior vena cava and this is the hepatic vein okay that said before I get to what is happening in this place there's a lot let's come to this organ this is the spleen and you know this is the superior border and this is the gastric impression of the spleen and this is supposed to be the ileum of the spleen you know what ileum is I've said this before in my videos ileum is where structures are passing like entering and exiting so this is the ileum of the spleen and what is passing through it you have the splenic artery this red one you have the splenic vein and you have the tail of the pancreas do you get so that's the ileum of the spleen this is the gastric impression of the spleen and this is the superior border of the spleen okay so that's for the spleen you also know you have the inferior border you have the anterior extremity and you have the posterior extremity of the spleen good okay so this is the stomach this is a cut of the stomach you know now your stomach is j-shaped yeah so that's that and let's move to this one this is the pancreas and the pancreas you have about four parts of the pancreas and it's well identified here this is the tail of the pancreas that is entering into the ileum of the spleen. Then you have the body of the pancreas. This part is the body of the pancreas. Then this is the neck of the pancreas. How do you identify the neck of the pancreas? The neck of the pancreas, that's where you see this superior uh, mesenteric vein and artery passing through. Um, to be very specific, they are the middle colic artery and the middle colic vein. Do you get that? Okay, so that marks the neck of the pancreas. It's just a branch of this superior mesenteric vein and artery. Do you get that? Okay, so we've talked about the tail, the body, the neck, and then you have the head of the pancreas. This is the head of the pancreas. Then you have the uncinate process of the pancreas. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that well, but you see that on your screen. The uncinate process, the head, the body, the neck, sorry, the body and the tail. Good. That being said, let's go to the next organ you can see. This is the duodenum, right? And from here you have the geogenome. You know the duodenum, geogenome and ileum, they all form the small intestine, right? Good. So the duodenum, don't forget, is C-shape and it's 25 cm. Okay, what other organ um, has the same length of the duodenum in the body? Let me get your answer in the comment section. Just go to the comment section and drop that. I'm going to be giving a gift to the winner. Okay, let's go there. This is the duodenum, like we said. These are circular folds of the duodenum. So the duodenum has four parts too, just like the pancreas. You have the superior parts. This part is the superior parts. Then you have the inferior parts. This is the second part, inferior part. Then you have the horizontal part. This part below is the horizontal part. Then you have the ascending part. This is the fourth part. This one coming up is the ascending part. Do you get? Then this is the geogenome. Do you get? You know there's a flexion between this duodenum and geogenome. Let me also know if you know that. Okay, so that's that. Then there's something happening in this place. I think we'll finish all the organs. Okay, gallbladder. We have gallbladder here. This is the gallbladder. And this part of the gallbladder is the fundus of the gallbladder. This was what exactly made me to bring out this model in my last video where I talked about events that are occurring at the L1 vertebra. If you've not watched that video, I'm going to be linking that video up there. So make sure you check out that video. Do you get? Okay. So this is the fundus of the gallbladder. Then this is the body of the gallbladder. This is the neck of the gallbladder. And this place is the cystic dot. And there are spiral folds in this place. You get spiral folds, and this is the cystic dot. Okay, so I think I'm done with all the organs. Yes, we'll finish liver, stomach, spleen, pancreas, duodenum, geogenum, gallbladder. Good. So we're going to be diving straight into the arteries, veins, and whatever we are seeing here. The dots. Do you get that? Okay, so don't get confused because this might get you confused. And where do we start from now? Okay, so like I said. 
this is the superior mesenteric vein and this is the superior mesenteric artery you get that and we have the middle colic artery marking the neck of the pancreas or the pancreatic notch you get that the jejunum you know what should be here the jejunal arteries and veins now let's get to this place you see this white thing in this pancreas so the pancreas has two dots this is the main pancreatic dot this long one that is coming like this is the main pancreatic dot why this other shorter one you're seeing here is the accessory pancreatic duct. This white one you're seeing here is the accessory pancreatic duct. So the main pancreatic duct, this one, is also called the duct of Winsong. Good? Yeah, Winsong. I know you don't know that before, okay? Then the accessory pancreatic duct is also called the duct of Santorini. Like, I won't forget that. Duct of Santorini, you guys. Okay, so good. So there's something that's happening here which your examiners will always want to ask you because it's very interesting. Okay, so I think I need to switch. Okay, so there's something that is happening here which your examiners will always want to ask you and this is what it is. We've said this is the main pancreatic dot and this is the accessory pancreatic dot. Good. So this one is the bi dot. This green one coming from the gallbladder is the bi dot. Don't get scared. I'm going to be telling you what's also happening in all these places. So this is the bi dot. So the bi dot meets with this main pancreatic dot to form the ampulla of vata. So your lecturer can decide to pin somewhere here and say, what is this? So that is the ampulla of vata. And now this ampulla of vata flows through to the second part of the duodenum. Now that part where it flows through is the major duodenal papillae. So after this union, after this marriage, they flow through this place called the major duodenal papillae. Then the accessory pancreatic duct, because it's just accessory, it's just minor, it says, okay, no need to meet with anybody. Let me just go on my own. So the accessory pancreatic duct will now flow through the minor duodenal papillae. People usually confuse this because they said major, the big is supposed to be up, while the small is supposed to be down. Please, that's not what's happening here. Do you get it? Okay. So the small one is actually up because if you check the course of the accessory pancreatic duct, you see that there is a turnover for the accessory pancreatic duct, while the main pancreatic duct flows downwards. So this is the ampulla ovata and it flows through the second part of the duodenum, which is the major duodenal papillae and this is also a landmark to know the embryonic origin of the duodenum you know the first part of the duodenum to this place this ampulla of vata is from the um, four gods then from this part to the rest part of the duodenum is from the mid gut so if you just say from the first part to the second part you might get it wrong so make sure you know that this is a landmark for something do you get okay so the accessory pancreatic duct flows through the minor duodenal papillae good and now there's something that is regulating the flow of this um, ampulla of vata through this major duodenal papillae just like you have in heart where um, circulation something um, stops the back flow of blood and you get okay so that is what is also happening here so there's something called the spinter of od so the spinter of od regulates um, the movement of this union of the bile dots and the main pancreatic dot. So note that sphincter of OD. Okay, so we're moving on now. Let's go upwards. You, we said this is the cystic dot with spiral folds. Now this particular one coming upwards is the common hepatic duct. Duct, not artery, not vein. So this is the common hepatic duct, and you can see it splits into two. So this um, splitting into two, you have the left hepatic dot and you have the right hepatic dot. Do you get? So the right needs to be in the lateral part while the left will be in the medial part. So this is the left and this is the right and this is the hepatic dot and this is the cystic dot and this is the bile dot. Got in that? Good. Okay. So moving ahead now, let's come up. Let's see this is inferior vena cava and we said this is hepatic vein. Good. This place is called the celiac trunk. American British, please, I don't know who calls it coliac trunk and I don't know who calls it celiac trunk. Now, the celiac trunk, for exam purpose, they can ask you direct branches of the celiac trunk. So we have three direct branches of the celiac trunk and I'm going to be showing you in this model. The first one is the left gastric artery. You can see how short it is here. The first one is the left gastric artery. Moving ahead, you see the splenic artery. You see where it's passing through? It passes superior of the pancreas, as on top of the pancreas to the ileum of the spleen. So this is the splenic artery. This is the left gastric artery. Then the last one is the common hepatic artery. This is the common hepatic artery. Very short, so, so observe, not the whole of all this. 
this one from year to year is the common hepatic artery just very short now the common hepatic artery then branches into two you see the first branch here and you see the second branch here so this first branch you're seeing here is now the hepatic artery proper and you can see two other splitting again so this is the left hepatic artery and this is the right hepatic artery so if we want to not move from year to year and let's move from year to year you would say the left and the right hepatic artery forms the hepatic artery proper and the hepatic artery proper now in union with this branch which is called the gastroduodenal artery forms the common hepatic artery which is a direct branch of the celiac trunk do you get or you go the other way around the celiac trunk has three direct branches and one of the direct branches is this common hepatic artery and it splits into two the gastroduodenal artery and then the hepatic artery proper the hepatic artery also splits into the left and the right hepatic artery and you're good to go did you get that okay so this blue one you're seeing is the what do you think it will be let me hear you let me hear you <laughs> is the hepatic portal vein you know the red usually is to be the artery then the other one but in cadaver the one that is more tortuous is the artery then the one that is not really tortuous is the vein so the one that you might see maybe black or blood vessel passing through is the artery do you get okay so coming back to what we have here now so this gastroduodenal artery further splits into two carefully look at it here and here you can see it split into two this one and this one so this one you can call that the posterior superior pancratico duodenal artery oh that's a lot too <laughs> so just know that you have the posterior superior pancratico duodenal artery and you have the anterior superior pancratico duodenal artery all from the gastro duodenal artery you got that okay so i think that's all we have in this place so do well to ask me for the questions if you feel like you're not cleared on the comment section i'm going to respond and i've also in a way showed you how they can ask you questions in this area so make sure you've understood that and you guys that's where we we'll cut this video make sure you check out other of my anatomy lessons and expect more anatomy lessons so you guys so that brings us to the end of this video don't forget to subscribe to this channel like this video and share it to your friends see you soon